All right, a couple of practices into open week. Um, pretty energetic practice today. Uh, important part of time, important important time of the year for us. And uh, you know, got a lot of things we want to accomplish this week with our with our travel guys, and uh, some things we want to accomplish with some of our guys that you know haven't played much yet. And uh, so, got a, a variety of things that we're doing uh, you know this week uh, on all fronts. So, uh, you know, pretty good day. Uh, you know, really looking forward to seeing you know some of the young guys that we put in there in certain situations. Uh, you know, throughout practice today and see how they did and, uh, you know, evaluate that and have another good one tomorrow. Coach, after a, a game like that, a loss like that, is, is it a good thing there's a bye week to recover from it or would you rather get out there and play right again? I'd probably rather play. You know, that's, that was a tough one the other night. And it's, you know, I'm still, I'm still waking up in the middle of the night with that one. So, um, you know, you, you, you wish you had a game right now. You know, you, you love, if, if you won that one, it's a great time for an open week. And that's the tough thing about it. You know, so close, but, uh, you know, the good thing about it is it does give us a chance to heal up. You know, it does give us a chance to get some guys some rest that play a lot of snaps. It gives us a chance to really work on some things that we need to improve on. Uh, give us a little bit of extra prep time for the second half of the season because we have some different situations and, you know, we've got a really, really good Houston team that we got to go down and face to start it and then a short week uh, to turn around with South Florida. And, you know, so it's just a lot of stuff coming right out of this open date. So for those reasons, it's a good time. But after the game, you said that you would undoubtedly watch that film and you'd see it was kind of one play here, one play there. Yeah. Do you still feel that way a few days later? Yeah, I mean, and it, naturally I'm biased, okay? I don't think it should have come down to the last drive, just in my opinion, but that's my opinion. Uh, I thought our kids played very, very hard. I thought we did a lot of good things. I thought we missed a lot of opportunities. You know, first two drives of the ball game, to come up with no points is, is very frustrating. Um, you know, to, to be deep in the red zone so many times and only have one touchdown is very frustrating. Um, you know, to not be able to get, uh, you know, a couple of stops there in the second half is frustrating. Now, UCF's talent and ability have a lot to do with that. I mean, it's, you know, we walk out there, you know, to start the game, and you're looking like, I mean, they're a good-looking football team. They're athletic. They're big. Uh, they're, it's a good football team. Um, I, I feel like we should have won the game. That's just how I feel. There's a couple of questions. Yep. With six seconds left, you know, they wound the clock. Was there a miscommunication there? And then also, when they were about. There was a lot right there. Was, when they were about to score, did you guys see them up taking a timeout? Yeah, we did. Um, you know, when we had them on third and two on the goal line right there, they lined up in a, in a formation and a set that we worked all week. Uh, we had the call that we wanted, so Coach Harrell and I were in communication. We had one timeout left. If we had taken the timeout, it would have been to basically review what we did on the play anyway. Um, and we executed. We had a guy in the backfield, you know, four yards, four yards from the goal line. If he gets him on the ground right there, it's going to be fourth and fourth and four, and they got a decision to make if they want to kick it and send it to overtime, or if they want to go for it and try to win the ball game. So, I don't feel like it would have impacted the the play call, um, and that's just, you know, that's why we didn't, you know. And in the six seconds, we'll yeah. That. So they. We called timeout, but they stopped the play for review, so they gave us our timeout back. So they uh, they said that the play clock would start on the ready for play whistle. So we were set, ready to snap the ball on the ready for play whistle. UCF calls timeout, but they said they had already set the clock, and so they, they at first they said they were going to give us the, the time back, and then come back, and they didn't. So I went ahead and called the timeout, and we changed what we were going to do. Uh, right there with the last snap. We thought we might have a chance for, with the timeout, maybe a chance for two snaps, but, you know, it just ended up the way it was. Coach, did you ever think about letting them score so you'd have more time at the end, or what do you think about that? Not, not in that situation. I think there's situations. There's situations to do that, but you're sitting there with a three-point lead. If you can hold them to a field goal uh, or a field goal attempt, uh, then the game goes to overtime or you win it, one of the two, and that was, that was what we were trying to do. I mean, it's there are situations where you do think about letting them score, but the, I, don't, I don't feel like that's one of them. You guys have been running the ball exceptionally well the previous few weeks, um, not as much this weekend. How do you think that affected the offense in general being forced to maybe try and go for um, the end zone in the air? Well, I think we did run the ball effectively in the, in the second half. Um, I think that uh, UCS defense, which we knew were you know, was a stout group coming into the game, had a lot to do with some of our – uh, you know, struggles in the first half. But I thought we moved the ball uh, pretty well up and down the field. You know, our struggles came 
uh, in the red zone. And, you know, it's a, it's a combination of UCF and our execution. So, um, you know, I was, I was pleased with how, especially the fourth quarter, the, the long drive in the fourth quarter, I was very pleased with how we were able to run the ball against a very talented defense. You guys could have finished that. That one drive was a touchdown. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what you envision, right? Yeah. Kind of I mean, that's so many of those drives. But, yeah, the first drive of the ball game, but especially that drive because that's you, – we're going to be in those ball games. I mean, we have put ourselves in a situation where we're going to be in close ball games in a very good conference against really good football teams. And, you know, if you can drive the ball like that late in the game and stick it in, where well, you already have the lead and now you go up two scores – um, and that kind of a drive, it really takes a lot of wind out of your sails if you're the, on the other sideline. And that's, you know, that's the next step. And that's, you know, we've hung our hat on being able to do that over the years. And it's, uh, you know, when you can do that and you can throw the football and you can play good defense, you know, that's that's when you turn into a team that wins a lot of ball games. And we're close. How valuable is the bye week for the guys at the front end that have already played a lot of football and taken a lot of contact in terms of healing up? And, and how do you approach that in terms of which guys – needed kind of dialed back on them some over this week as opposed to which guy you want at the forefront to get the work. Well, it's a case by case deal. You know, you can't you can't treat everybody the same because everybody's not the same. You know, you got to look at who's who's got what, you know, bumps and bruises and what what those bumps and bruises are. Uh, you know, who's played a ton of snaps and who hadn't played a ton of snaps and you know, and what you're needing to work on. So it's there's a lot. I mean, there's just so much that goes into the bye week. Um, you know, I think we had a you know, yesterday was a lighter practice. Today was a heavy practice. And I, I thought there were a lot of good things we did. I thought that, you know, some of the uh, execution with the new scheme that we're working on for Houston, uh, you know, you had some ups and downs right there, which, which we talk about that every week. You're going to have that on that first first day of the week with the, the contact stuff. So, um, you know, want to have a same kind of energy practice tomorrow with better execution. Uh, and then I think we've got two good work days uh, and a good head start for getting ready for Houston next week. We're preparing the game plan, uh, coaching staff wise. We're not going to work it uh, with our team, but we're going to prepare the game plan this week because when we get back at whatever time in, in the morning, Sunday morning, uh, a week from now, you know, it'll be we'll wake up and it's going to be Sunday and Tuesday all at the same time with no Monday, and so it's uh, you lose the prep time is the big thing you lose. We'll adjust the practice schedule to make sure that the kids are, are ready and they're rested. But the prep time, you're going to lose a day, a day and a half that you you're not going to get back. So, when you look at the the receivers, you are playing you know, a lot of older guys. Do you feel like this could be a week where some of those younger receivers maybe get closer to? Play? Yeah, yeah, and that's we we talked about it. We had several of them that we were you know getting extra reps today. Uh, you know, being very deliberate with trying to get some of those young guys to come along a little bit more. And you know, when you talk about those guys, it's just they're all at different places. You know, Jari Patterson's at one place, Kerry King's at another place. You know, those are two guys that just popped to my mind, you know, right out of the gate. Um, you know, the guys that have been playing a good bit, uh, you know, they could, you know, they, they're not going to get quite as much work this week. And, uh, and you know, you got to kind of balance that with making sure they get enough to stay sharp and improve on things that we, uh, we need to do better. Coach, you touched on bye week. I feel like you're kind of at a pivotal point in the season right here, you know, what do you think of that? I know you take it one week at a time, but three and three going into the middle of the year right. can go either way. You know how pivotal is this to kind of just really hone it in? Well, I think it's like I said uh, yesterday. We, we talked kind of big picture with the, the players on Sunday um, because I thought that you can, you can step back and do that this week. Um, um, it's next week's a big week. Every week's a big week uh, because you know it's. You know, when, 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 I, when I took this job and you look at everything that makes ECU great, uh, you know, a big piece of that was, you know, our fan base. You know, that's, football's important here, and our fans are passionate. Uh, and they, you know, they, they want to see the success on the field the same as we do. And that's, that's what you want. You want fans that care. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to get everybody rowing in the same direction, whether it's talking about, you know, administration, fans, players, coaches, everybody, you know, because we all want the same thing. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's a deal where I've, I've got confidence in where our team is mentally right now. Um, and, you know, I think that the, a loss like the other night is frustrating, uh, especially coming off a three-game win streak and playing so well on homecoming against Tulane. 
Uh, but at the same time, you know, I see where our team is now that you, you're in those frustrating losses against really good teams in this league. Now it's, it's time to, you know, have, you know, just phenomenal wins against that team. Because, you, you know, you win that thing 16-13 or whatever the other night. I mean, you're, it's a celebration like no other down in that locker room in, in Florida. I mean, because it's – the guys that were in that locker room two years ago, it's it completely flipped. And so, yeah, it's, it's a, this is a big part of our season, but we're excited. I mean, I'm, I can't wait to get down to Houston a week from Saturday. It's, they're a really good football team, 5-1, and one, playing very well, uh, talented on both sides of the ball. But I'm excited to see our team go down there and play. And uh, that's, that's the big thing we're focusing on right now is, you know, we have a chance to go down there and, and, and play a really good football team and, and hopefully come home with a win. And that's, that's just a, that's a long ways from where, we, where, where we've been. And uh, I'm excited about that. And uh, I want our fan base to be excited about it. Our players are excited about it. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I, I'm, it's bye week. You know, I'm going to enjoy some things you enjoy during bye week. We're going to get on the road recruiting latter end of the week. Uh, but I'm ready for game week again. Coach Holden had that one play where it looked like he could have ran. He threw it to CJ. I guess it's easy to second guess. It's yeah. Curved out, but you re- go back and rewatch that. Is that something you emphasize with him? Yeah, and it's something we've 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 harped on a lot with him. And I just, and I, I mean, I've, I was talking to him immediately after the play on the sideline right there too. And it's something we've been very, uh, you know, very deliberate this week with putting him in those situations. And he, he, he knows. I mean, he sees it. I mean, he easily would have gotten the first down. I think he would have had a, it would have been a bang bang play at the pylon. So you're talking about a touchdown. Uh, now he's got a lot of faith in CJ. We all do. But that's a low percentage throw there in the back of the end zone. And it's, it's one where he's, he's got to, he, he's got to take advantage of his abilities in that situation. Uh, because it was, you know, there was a lot of green grass between him and the next UCF defender. Um, yeah, you can't, you can't play the shoulda, coulda, woulda game. You know, that's, that's just not it. We've got to do a better job preparing him. That's the big thing. And that's, that's the same way with some of the, you know, pull reads and give reads and stuff that we didn't do a good job with the other night. We've got to do a better job preparing he and Mason. Uh, and that was a big emphasis in today's practice. I didn't see Mason throwing much today. Everything okay there? Yeah, he's a little banged up, you know, from that play the other night. You know, there's an old adage that when, you know, sometimes when, when you mess up, you're the one that gets, you know, gets the brunt end, brunt end of it. And, uh, you know, it was a give read. He pulled it, and he pulled it straight into two unblocked defenders. So, uh, you know, he'll be fine. He'll probably throw tomorrow. But uh, we, gave him, we gave him a day off from throwing today. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks,